you let Antarctica get even just the smallest hold on you and it will eat you up and spit you out. Antarctica, the coldest, windiest and highest continent on Earth. January 2009 saw the first organised race to the South Pole since Scott and Amundsen's fateful adventure nearly 100 years ago. And we're off. TV presenter Ben Fogel. How far is it? Olympic gold medalist James Cracknell. I'm absolutely exhausted. And Dr. Ed Coates raced over 750 kilometres. Oh, mate, what's happening to me? In one of the world's most hostile and remote environments. We are very much alone. They raced 16 hours a day. It's just got so bad now, it's just not true, it's not funny. Faced blizzards. I don't know whether I want to laugh or cry. Suffered frostbite and exhaustion. Oh, God. We're not even halfway. And risked their lives trying to win one of the toughest races. Oh, jeez. On the planet. This is their story. The race is as much a mental battle as a physical one. James, tell me you didn't just do what I think you meant. <coughs> yeah. Drink my aspirin. Because you confused me by giving me aspirin, I've done all my painkillers. You've just drunk your own wee. Mouthful of piss. Ah! <laughs> oh. Could that it get any worse? Frostbite, blisters, chest infection needing steroids, burnt lips, face like an Eskimo, ginger beard, <laughs> chug my own piss. <laughs> so Antarctica's everything you thought it would be. I can't. It's just got so bad now, it's just not true, it's not funny. <laughs> sure, the sad thing is, it's, oh, I can't be able to wash my teeth. We're so nearly there. The culmination of a year and a half's hard work. Finally, the American base at the South Pole comes into view. About five kilometers from the South Pole, we caught a glimpse of the buildings. I mean, it was just there, but you just couldn't reach it. It was just there, it was never getting closer, never, ever getting closer. It was just agonizing. And our eyes were going and our heads were drooping and our legs started seizing up and cramping. And then finally, you could see the flags. I felt myself awaken. They've been through an incredible physical and emotional journey. They've looked Antarctica in the face and been battered by its storms. It's frozen them and pushed them to the edge of exhaustion. But they've persevered, and now the pole is within their grasp. Yeah, 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 yes! Finally, the polar novices, Ben Fogel, James Cracknell, and Ed Coates, can let their feelings go as they step up to conquer the South Pole. We skied up to this ball, total silence. There's a whole little crowd of people in front of us, race organizers, the Norwegians, a few people from the base. And then we just collapsed in sobs of tears. They've raced 762 kilometers. It's taken 18 days, five hours and 30 minutes. And despite all they've been through, they finished in an incredible second place. They've been exhausted physically and emotionally, but at last their dream has come true. I think for me, it was, the feeling was one of massive satisfaction, which is, which is a nice way to finish any race. We'd done what we, we set out to do. I ended up completing the most incredible journey of my life with two of the most amazing friends you could ask for. At the end of one of the toughest endurance races on the planet, they can now rest and recover from their exhaustion and cold weather injuries. We will remember this for right. the rest of our lives. We will never forget this, okay? 
We will never ever forget this. Second man. That's bloody good. I'll buy that. Yeah. James, you probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's one of the things I found here is is, uh, is is all about working in a team, whether it's a team of, of people that you're you're trying to achieve a goal with, or whether it's a team of of someone you're trying to raise a raise a family with. You know, it's it's only eight weeks here, but hopefully it's another 50 years with Bev. I don't think you can do anything like this and not go away from it a changed person and make the most of life because life is short. Everyone asks, what next? What next? 